Welcome. Let's talk about some of the key points in evaluating adult PSG or polysomnogram report. So today we'll talk about how to confirm that it truly is a polysomnogram or an in-lab sleep study and we'll define it as well. The next we'll talk about is the total sleep time, the percentage REM, the AHI, the oxygen and any cardiac rhythms, and also periodic limb movements of sleep. So let's get started. First of all, to confirm, look at the top of the sleep report. It should state that it's a baseline polysomnogram with a sleep tech in attendance, followed by the list of uh, monitors used, such as EEG, ECG, EMG, and so on. The next thing to do is to define. Now, define a PSG is basically a polysomnogram, which is a sleep study, and an all-night sleep study is a sleep study where there's no intervention taken where the patient is hooked up with the monitor as they fall asleep and throughout the night all is done is the observation and collection of data regarding the sleep. Now most sleep labs nowadays should default to a split night study wherein there's enough evidence of any abnormal breathing during sleep or obstructive sleep apnea and they'll go ahead and start them on CPAP after two to three hours of data. However, there are a minority of patients that do deserve and require a full night polysomnogram. And those patients are usually patients with severe neurological disease, uh, patients with uh, suspected nocturnal seizures, or even patients with a history of seizures with disrupted sleep, uh, patients with abnormal sleep behaviors, or patients uh, with um, suspected uh, idiopathic or hypersomnia disorders uh, not related to obstructive sleep apnea or sleep-related breathing problems. So kind of, uh, kind of like the fringe patients that we normally don't see in the sleep lab. And these patients do deserve a full night sleep study to collect as much data on them as possible. So the next thing is total sleep time. You want to have a total sleep time of about above six hours or so. And this will give you a rough idea or give you a, an adequate insight into the patient's sleep behavior. However, even less sleep, especially in patients with severe sleep apnea, uh, where they don't uh, get the full six hours of sleep may be uh, adequate as these patients you do detect that they do have enough uh, sleep apneic episodes. However, it is important to be aware that if the results are, f are negative and your suspicion for a sleep-related breathing disorder is high, this may be a false negative, especially if they have less, less than six hours of sleep. So do take note of that. The next thing to do is percentage of REM. Most percentage REMs should fall within 15 to 20 percent of the total sleep time and uh, that should be expected. However, there will be pa patients who will have uh, reduced REM time and this will be due to severe sleep apnea or even breathing disorders during sleep. Uh, due to the repeated episodes of awakening, snorting, snorting cough, uh, coughing and gagging and so on, the patients never truly go from stage 1, 2 and 3 sleep into REM sleep. Hence, this may disrupt the amount of total REM time they do have. Uh, there are other causes as well for reduced REM time such as leg movements, insomnia and even antidepressant use in patients. Again, similar to total sleep time, if the result surprises you, if you expected the patient to have sleep apnea and uh, the results were negative, it may be a false negative. So do take note of that. In addition, uh, the amount of REM time will also reflect uh, truly whether the AHI in these patients are a reflection of the true severity of the disease. As uh, most women or female patients tend to manifest the worst of their sleep apnea episodes uh, during REM time. The next is the AHI. Now the AHI is the apnea hypopnea index, which is the total number of apneic and hypopneic episodes per hour of sleep. Now in most of the time, in obstructive sleep apnea patients, you're looking for an AHI above 5, especially if the patient has any sleep-related complaints such as non-restorative sleep, uh, complaints by the bed partner, snoring, waking up, dyspneic, and so on. You All you need is an OSA above 5 with one of these complaints or any other comorbidities such as hypertension, heart disease, and so on though I think the evidence for the effectiveness of treatment of OSA tends to be more so in patients with moderate to severe, which is above 15 events an hour. However, they may be treated above five if they come in with some of these problems related to the sleep complaints. Now the next, the other option is if they have above 15, these will not require patients to have any other complaints except just a AHI above 15 would qualify them for treatment. In central sleep apnea patients, the additional requirement is not only should they 
respiratory events or the central respiratory events be above five. However, this should comprise also more than 50% of total um, breathing events per hour. So example, if the patient has an AHI of 20, the, CSA, uh, the central sleep apneic episode should reflect or should comprise more than 50% of it or more than 10 to truly fall into the category of central sleep apnea. The next thing to take note of is the oxygen saturation. Now, if they have less than 90% sats for more than five minutes of the time that will qualify them as having um, hypoxemia during sleep the sleep study and if it's related to breathing events or obstructive events during sleep that should resolve when the patient's titrated with CPAP so when you do undergo the titration uh, part of the study if the patient still has persistent hypoxemia further evaluation for pulmonary or cardiac disease is required uh, cardiac rhythms as well as the other thing to take note of uh, patients with run, short runs of VTAC, AFib for example may only manifest it during uh, sleep portions of the study and especially in patients with obstructive sleep apnea most of the uh, documented cardiac deaths tend to occur at night so this is an important uh, thing to note of as well during the report if there's any mention of any cardiac arrhythmias. The next thing is PLMS or periodic limb movements of sleep and usually the requirements for adults is above 15 movements an hour. Now a lot of the times PLMS or PLMD uh, which is periodic limb movement disease does not require treatment as they tend to be innocent bystanders or we actually have no idea what they tend uh, um, to mean. Um, but in patients with obstructive sleep apnea or any other breathing problems related to sleep the expectation is that once you treat the breathing events, the periodic limb movements should improve. So in patients where you do find that PLMS is noted to be above 15 an hour and, you, and they have concurrent sleep apnea, when the patient's treated for OSA, they should have an improvement and the patient still complains of non-restorative sleep awakenings, their bed partners still complain, they run in their sleep. At that point, you need to evaluate whether that this needs to be treated. Please refer to how to evaluate and treat PLMDs. So that's it for the key points in adult PSG reports. Thank you.